Good morning. We're in day nine of the Israeli war with Hamas, Iran's Palestinian proxy government in Gaza. Uh, as we remember, on October 7th, uh, Hamas operatives invaded Israel and conducted a slaughter uh, of Jews in the border communities with Gaza, whose brutality uh, is something that we've never seen before, not even uh, with ISIS and and in many cases, not even with the Nazis. Um, we have over 1,300 Israelis, predominantly civilians, uh, many, 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 many small children uh, who have been murdered. And that's the counting so far. We have between 150 and 200 Israeli captives in Gaza, including many, many children and women and old people and men uh, who are now in harm's way in a way that uh, is unspeakable. Um, at the same time, almost simultaneously with the Hamas slaughter, we started hearing a chorus of international voices led actually by the Biden administration, in fact, by President Biden himself, exhorting Israel to prosecute our war against Hamas in accordance with the rules of war. Um, and some people just assumed that that didn't mean much. And um, then all of a sudden we're, we're starting to get amidst the Israeli Air Force uh, bombings of Iran from uh, of Iran of Gaza from the air uh, ahead of the ground invasion that's anticipated. Um, we are being uh, subjected to increasing assaults on the international media, in the British media, in the American media, in the French media. Uh, and media throughout the world, and also governments that are saying that Israel has to adhere to the rules of war, proportionality, and humanitarian law. Um, and uh, I wanted to turn to discuss this briefly with uh, Professor Avi Bell from Bar Ilan University and University of San Diego Law School. Uh, Professor Bell has been a guest on the Carolyn Glick Show many times over the past uh, two years, and uh, he is an expert on the rules of war under international law. And uh, and I want to shine some light on this very critical subject so that we understand what is politics, what is law, how we're supposed to look at the whole thing. So uh, Professor Bell, can you just give us um, a sense of what they're talking about when they're talking about the rules of war? And why, why is this onslaught against Israel? Uh, what is it directed towards? And how should Israel uh, be looking at this? So um, there's two basic rules in the, the laws of war. One is uh, about targeting. One is about collateral damage. Uh, the targeting rule is aim your, uh, aim your fire at legitimate targets, that is, enemy combatants, uh, the other side, uh, people who are participating in the uh, conflict, um, objects that that support or otherwise contribute to the uh, fighting efforts of the enemy, even if they're civilian. Um, and, uh, and so on and so forth. That's your targeting rule. The collateral damage rule, it's called proportionality, and it says that um, you can attack those targets even though there's going to be collateral damage, even though there's going to be substantial collateral damage to, to civilians, to hospitals, etc. So long as the damage, the collateral damage is not clearly excessive, in relation to the military necessity. Now, obviously, um, the military necessity here is great. The military necessity for Israel is to destroy the um, the sadistic, genocidal, anti-Semitic terrorist organization that committed these atrocities uh, about a week ago. Um, and because this organization is not only uh, committed atrocities, but is continuing to commit war crimes by uh, targeting and attacking Israeli civilians and by holding hostages um, and attempting once again to invade Israeli territory to, uh, to uh, uh, carry out more attacks. Um, it is essential that Israel carry out its uh, a successful attack on Hamas as quickly as possible. Now, um, there's there's uh, uh, two ironic pieces here. Right? So one is uh, all this talk about um, um, international law. When when you're talking about uh, Hamas and Israel, it's absolutely clear that Israel makes great efforts to comply always with the rules of war. I, I think that in the past, in fact, um, uh, uh, 
overly so. That is, in the past, Israel has been overly strict with itself in order to um, in order to comply with the rules. Um, now, I, I don't know if Israel is 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 throttling this back. I hope so. I get some indications that's the case. Where Israel is simply going to follow the law instead of adding additional stringencies on itself. But to um, but to complain that Israel is not following the law, or to insinuate that Israel is not following the law, particularly when we're talking about, um, on the other side, a fighting organization that in every way possible violates the law. It's just, it's perverse. It's morally obtuse at the best and morally obscene, in my opinion. And I, I think that the, um, uh, the people who are making these comments have to stop. Right, they're 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 cooperating with Hamas propaganda. It is part of Hamas propaganda in every round of fighting to um, make the the outrageous accusation that Israel is violating the law. And by uh, going along with this, um, they're they are, I think, failing to understand the law and doing something which is immoral. Now that's p- part one. Now part two, part two is that we have to understand in this case actually. There is international law regarding how states should deal with Hamas. Hamas, as I said, is a sadistic, genocidal, anti-Semitic terrorist organization. And this is important under international law. So, for example, under the Genocide Convention, um, um, persons who commit genocide, attempt to commit genocide, incite genocide, have to be prevented and punished by all states in the world, irrespective of they're the, the target of the genocide. And that means that every state in the world has... Yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to add to that question, because there are two aspects of this that I also want you to touch on. The first one is that the European Commission announced yesterday that they're going to give supplemental aid of 50 million euros to Gaza. And I'm wondering if that's legal. And the other along the lines no, that you're setting out with the genocide convention. Okay, so and then I'll I'll add in the other question afterwards. So so explain uh, so, why yeah, that's it, it, illegal. It, okay, there's two reasons why it's illegal. Okay, so number one is the genocide convention. The genocide convention requires that they prevent and punish genocide. Um, it's not enough simply to observe that um, Hamas carried out killings um, in service of a genocidal agenda, which is the crime of genocide. Crime of genocide does not require that you be successful in, in in mass killings. It requires merely that you have the purpose of wiping out the other people um, and that you carry out even a single killing in, in, in furtherance of that purpose. And they have certainly violated the genocide convention now at least 1,300 times more. And, uh, um, the, uh, uh, and that requires, therefore, that that European Union not provide aid. They do the, exactly the opposite. They have to do what they can to prevent Hamas from carrying out any more killings. Now that's one bit of it. The other bit of this, as I said, it's you know it's a it's a a sadistic, uh, genocidal, anti-Semitic terrorist organization. The fact that it's a terrorist organization also implicates international law. Under Security Council Resolution thirteen seventy three, all states are required to give one another the full degree of support, full measure of support in order to combat terrorist organizations. They are to pre- prevent any kind of support for terrorist organizations, even indirectly. When you give aid to uh, uh, the population of Gaza under the situation which prevails now, where Hamas has control of Gaza, and you know for certain that aid is going to be at least in part devo- de- uh, diverted to support the operations of Hamas, you are violating section. You are violating Resolution 1373. You are giving uh, direct or indirect support to a terrorist organization that is illegal under international law, and they have to stop immediately. Okay, let me ask you now about Qatar and Iran. Um, it it was pretty amazing. I thought that Secretary of State Blinken went from Israel to Qatar where the leaders of Hamas are uh, located, all of the senior leadership of Hamas, and they're 
um, sending out publicly their directives, both to Hamas and to the global Muslim population, calling for um, the Muslims around the world to commit acts of genocide against Jews and furtherance of jihad. Um, and um, they're also representing Hamas in Gaza. Um, and I'm wondering what uh, the international community uh, should be doing in accordance with international law vis-a-vis Qatar's very public, open sponsorship of Hamas. Well, I think this is the point at which Israel should do what uh, Biden purported to do. And when, when Biden said, reminded Israel that democracies uh, fight according to law, well, um, it's time to remind the United States that it has to behave according to international law as well. Um, Qatar is violating Security Council Resolution 1373. It is violating international treaties uh, regarding support for terrorist organizations. It is uh, violating the Genocide Convention by uh, failing to prevent the deeds of Hamas. It's done this for a long time. Qatar has been uh, sponsoring and assisting Hamas for many years. It's not the only one, of course. You know, Turkey has done the same. And, and of course, Iran is uh, at the top of the list. But, but uh, uh, Qatar and Turkey are dealt with differently. They're permitted, they're even encouraged to violate international law brazenly in supporting uh, a sadistic, genocidal, anti-Semitic terrorist organization. And again, this has to stop. Now, um, uh, since we're friends, the Israel should remind the United States in, in a friendly manner uh, that it has to abide by international law, but it has to be firm. I, you know, it's very nice to get sympathy, but it would be much better if they actually did what they have to do. Um, uh, you know, as, as Golda said, um, we'd, we'd rather have um, um, uh, dislike and criticism based on um, us being alive than a really nice obituary. So, uh, you know, it's, it's time for them to, to live up to the standards they're claiming uh, that they support. Um, I want to move on for a second to Iran. Um, so I've seen some suggestions over time, uh, over the past few days of of two uh, things that could be due vis-a-vis -vis Iran from a, an international law perspective, because Iran is publicly bragging that they're behind this uh, 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 slaughter and uh, threatening Israel um, with uh, Armageddon. So, um, one of the suggestions that I saw being raised regarding Iran was uh, that the United States simply not uh, uh, transfer the $6 billion that the Biden administration uh, uh, committed to on freezing in Iranian oil revenues um, uh, uh, in, in exchange for U.S. hostages that were held in, in Iran. Um, and uh, there was some talk that the United States was going to freeze those uh, revenues again. They're being held in Qatar. How do, you, how do you look at that from an international law perspective? Again, it is forbidden under international law, under Security Council Resolution 1373, under the International Convention for Suppression of Terrorist Financing um, and other documents, it's forbidden to provide even indirect uh, support to the terrorists. And under the circumstances where Iran is giving very, very clear support to Hamas terrorists, where it's making illegal mili threats of military intervention in order to support the terrorist army, um, it is unconscionable and illegal to uh, transfer funds to, to Iran. And it makes no difference what prior agreements were made. Um, so it's not simply the United States has to immediately... Um, immediately uh, stop that, um, the United States uh, should be pressing <laughs> at least one of its allies that was involved with the uh, uh, original uh, Iran Accord to snap back sanctions. It's it's unbelievable, unconscionable that it hasn't happened since now. Since, uh, okay, so uh, I wanna, that was my has, next yeah. question to you. So let me just set it up before you give it to me. The, the question that I wanted to ask was regarding snap back sanctions. Um, the 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 question has been raised. Well, why would why would Iran's involvement with Hamas's genocide against Israel be relevant to the nuclear deal and uh, and and the question of whether to sanction them for for breaching the nuclear deal? It's look. It's not directly uh, um, 
relevant. That is, um, if if all that Iran were doing would, would be supporting terrorist organizations, but um, it was otherwise abiding by every jot and tittle of the nuclear deal, then um, snapback would not be available as a, a, as a response. But of course, as we know, Iran has been openly in violation of the agreement for, for years now. So, I mean, the, the other aspect that I wanted to go to just uh, as we, as we uh, close the stack, because we want to make it brief so that people can uh, uh, digest all of this very important information, is Egypt. Um, so uh, the answer, and, and I think you wrote an article about this in the New York Post as well last week, um, the answer uh, for all the people calling for uh, a means to avert a humanitarian disaster uh, such as it is among the civilians in Gaza, is uh, for them to uh, vacate Gaza um, ahead of the Israeli ground invasion uh, and cross over into uh, the Egyptian Sinai Peninsula. And Egypt is blocking that from happening. And um, how do you look at Egypt's uh, position? And also, how do you look at the international uh, communities, the Europeans, the Americans, and others who seem to be um, backing Egypt's position and placing the onus for preventing a humanitarian crisis in Gaza on Israel. Um, Egypt is acting uh, contrary to the law, but I, you know, let's let's understand that besides the uh, um, um, the game of Egypt, which is part of the Arab world and therefore is expressing sympathy for the. Um, for the sadistic, uh, genocidal, anti-Semitic terrorist organization, for the, the battle against uh, um, Israel, and so on, and is, is pledging to, to help promote further Palestinian suffering in order to promote the, co the Palestinian cause. Alongside the, Egypt's illegal actions, there is something pragmatic behind what Egypt is doing, and that is Egypt does not want to end up holding the bag um, with a million and more uh, Palestinian civilians that run away from the conflict. And there's a very simple solution to this, which is that all the, the, the uh, hypocrites and lawbreakers in the European Union, uh, in the democratic world, um, can step up. This is not an unfathomable number of, of civilians to relocate for the conflict. A much larger number of, of civilians was accommodated from the Ukraine in a very, very rapid amount of time throughout Europe. It, it can be done. It must be done. And um, it, in addition to pressing Egypt to open the border to allow civilians in and say, to cooperate in setting up a screening mechanism to ensure that um, um, as, as people are crossing, they are only civilians, um, not hostages, not terrorists. Right? Um, in addition to that, there has to be um, uh, at least one, but I think there ought to be dozens of states that turn their, all their bleeding over the years about uh, uh, alleged concern for Palestinian uh, civilians and for the, the, the humanitarian situation of the Palestinians, it's time for them to put their money where their mouth is and take them in during out, outside the conflict area for the duration of the conflict. It's obviously impossible for Israel to allow mass numbers of Gazans to enter Israeli territory. Uh, I, that, that would be perverse um, and dangerous. Um, and so the only way this can be done, the only way that this can be done is, is through Egypt. And all these arguments that have been made against Israel, that, that uh, um, um, Israel has a duty to allow uh, uh, Gazans to transit through Israel to get medical treatment, etc. Well, they apply a hundredfold to Egypt. Egypt is the only transit point. They are absolutely required under refugee law under, uh, 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 and other, other laws to permit immediately the, uh, the, the, the Gazan civilians to exit and get to safety. And all the more so, if, there's, if there is a, a, a willingness in Turkey to take them in, then uh, um, uh, the uh, European countries, instead of devoting their money to helping Hamas, should be devoting their money to an airlift of those uh, refugees after screening, after screening, 
to Turkey, to camps in Turkey, where they can be then uh, helped. The, the, uh, the last question that I want to I want to touch on with you is uh, the United Nations, the United Nations, UNRWA, uh, UNRWA. Um, I mean, there's there's a whole show to be had on UNRWA and its role in supporting Hamas and really acting as an adjunct to Hamas uh, and its regime in Gaza. But overall, we've seen statements by U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres and the UN uh, Human Rights uh, uh, Commission, and uh, and now uh, Russia wants to put forward an, uh, a um, resolution in the Security Council, uh, all of them uh, directing their fire against Israel. Um, how would you suggest that we look at the UN onslaught against Israel? And how, uh, um, just why don't we leave it there? How, how are we supposed to see what the UN is doing? The UN, unfortunately, is doing its usual, which is not merely being uh, uh, counterproductive. Uh, it is acting contrary to international law, contrary to its mission. It is um, um, protecting terrorists, um, attacking their victims, and um, exacerbating in every way possible the conflict. And and this too has to stop. And. Um, those people who believe that the UN has an important and positive function to, uh, to play in the world, this is this is their moment of truth. You know, they can they can um, either return the United Nations to its um, uh, to its path, or at the very least, prevent these UN organs from creating further mischief and from further uh, illegal activity. Or they're going to ha have to understand that there will be consequences for the UN. You cannot go on um, vic uh, victimizing the victims of terrorism, the victims of a genocide campaign. You cannot go on uh, uh, attacking them and supporting terrorists and violating international law endlessly without consequence. But I just actually I have one last question, which is about the civilians. Um, we've seen footage now uh, that came out over the, the past couple of days and also eyewitness accounts of the victims, that along with the uh, Hamas butchers that came in uh, to Israel, that invaded Israel, uh, a couple thousand Gazans came as well, who are ostensibly civilians. And they also engaged in, uh, in, uh, in uh, wanton violence against the Jews. Um, I'm not quite clear whether they were also engaged in the killing uh, and but they were engaged in the rape, and uh, they also, after the Jews were were dead, uh, they came into their houses and they and they stole their property and brought all of these things back to Gaza. And also, there have been reports that some of the hostages are being held by people who are ostensibly civilians. So when people are talking about civilians in Gaza, and we see evidence that civilians in Gaza have been participating in the atrocities how are we supposed to look at the population and also given the fact that the population itself of gaza has greeted hamas's acts of genocide uh, with jubilation yeah so um let's understand the way it works is this that um civilians who participate in conflict are legitimate targets civilians who participate in war crimes are not entitled to any of the benefits of refugee law. If they try to cross, they have to be grabbed and put on trial. If they're caught in Israel during uh, uh, um, the, the hostile act of the invasion, they should be killed on the spot. They are legitimate targets and deadly force should be used against them without asking any questions. Um, but that doesn't make the entire civilian population of Gaza a legitimate target. It simply it, uh, uh, emphasizes the need for screening. Israel's under no duty to provide any aid to these civilians that participated in crimes. In fact, quite the opposite. As I said, because they participated um, in crimes of genocide, Israel is under a duty to prevent and punish. Um, I'll, I'll um, add one more thing. Um, and this is something that's important to remember. According to the last polls that were taken several months ago, Hamas enjoys either plurality or majority support 
um, among the Palestinian population at large and fairly clearly majority support in Gaza. That's not a, it's not a crime to uh, believe in the cause of a sadistic, genocidal, anti-Semitic uh, terrorist organization. It's only a crime to help them materially. Um, but it does tell us something about how to approach this conflict. When, um, when the United States and the Allies were thinking about how to deal with uh, Nazi Germany, and I think that's a very, very good analogy, we have um, um, not just a regime that is criminal, um, that is barbaric, inhuma inhuman, and has to be utterly destroyed. You also have to think of the society underneath it, which is Nazi, right? It doesn't mean that everyone was a Nazi. It meant that there was a substantial portion of the population that was Nazi. And um, um, Germany had to be denazified. And it was a major part of Allied policy towards Germany was denazifying uh, uh, Germany after, after the Nazi regime itself had been destroyed. And that's the same in this case. We have to already begin to think about what it is that uh, uh, has to be done in order to um, uh, identify and punish all the many civilian adherents of this abhorrent ideology. And it, it, just because they can't be targeted in acts of war unless they themselves have given uh, uh, material support in some way, just because they can't be targeted doesn't mean that we have to uh, let it go. We can't let it go. I agree with you. I agree with you. And I think that we're going to end it with that. Um, I want to thank you, Professor Avi Bell. We're going to have you back again uh, as the uh, recriminations of Israel, I'm sure, are just going to multiply as uh, as events proceed uh, in Gaza. So I appreciate very much uh, your uh, your information. And guys, uh, we'll, we're going to be regularly updating you again on this channel and JNS.org. Uh, you can follow everything we do as well. Uh, on the website. So thank you very much. And, uh, and thank you, uh, Professor Belt. We'll uh, talk to you uh, soon. Thank you.